What's up everybody and thank you for joining me for another video. My name is WAC4863, but you can call me WAC. In today's video, I'm going to talk about whether you should buy Valheim and why it's so popular, why it's done so well and been so successful in such a short period of time. Now, Valheim is an early access game. Yes, you heard it right. It is an early access game and it's had over 3 million downloads already. Valheim has over 71,000 overwhelmingly positive reviews on Steam already, which is absolutely amazing, especially for an early access game. Now, first of all, let me tell you a little bit about Valheim in case you're entirely new to it and you haven't heard about it before. It is an open world survival craft, a survival game, and an online co-op game. Those are the tags that are put on the game on Steam. It is published by Coffee Stain Publishing and the developer is Iron Gate AB. Valheim is a brutal exploration and survival game for 1 to 10 players, set in a procedurally generated, purgatory-inspired Viking culture. Battle, build, and conquer your way to a saga worthy of Odin's patronage. If you're new here, I'd encourage you to click that subscribe button, click that bell so you get notified when I upload another tip, trick, or gameplay video. So let's talk about some of the things that the publisher and developers did with Valheim right off the bat. So first of all, they gave out keys to content creators. Now the opinion of content creators is a very important to their communities. So when a content creator gets a key and they like the game, they can really boost the sales of that game. Additionally, if they dislike a game, if they find it to be buggy or they find it to be whatever, really difficult, not balanced well, all the different things that come into play when you're testing and playing an early access game, they can really minimize the amount of people that will buy that game. And as a content creator myself, I look at that as kind of a service to people to not spend their money on certain games at certain times. Now, I do follow a lot of early access games, and honestly, right here, right off the bat, I'm going to tell you, if you haven't picked up Valheim and you are into the co-op versions of games or you're into survival games or solo, this is a game that you are definitely going to enjoy. Now, I do want to thank the dev team for giving me a key and allowing me to check it out. I'm really enjoying the game. I have 91 hours on record right now, and I'm still enjoying the game. I still have more to explore and more to do, and I'm sure I'm going to put just a ton more hours into the game. And it's still early access, so I have 91 hours in an early access game, and I haven't explored all the content that's in it yet. And that's another thing that Valheim really got right with their launch to early access is there's a lot of content in there. A lot of early access games lack in content. The concept is there, the mechanics may be there, but there isn't a lot of content. Valheim has a ton of content already. And even if you're not on their forums or watching their Steam updates or their Twitter or anything like that, you can tell just by going through the different biomes that they have more content planned. So I happened upon the Mistlands just the other day, and though it's void of any enemies, I could tell by the terrain and by what's there, what's planned and what's coming to that area in the future, and that really excites me. Now let's get into the meat and potatoes of this. So first of all, I want to say if you're playing it solo, you're probably going to have a difficult time with some of the areas or some of the bosses. Those are definitely going to give you a challenge as a solo. You may need to come up with interesting ways to defeat some of the bosses, really, and maybe even some of the standard enemies in the game as a solo player. However, this is a co-op game. It is definitely not suited for just open multiplayer because there are mechanics for destruction of building and different things that would create some interesting trolling abilities if it was felt to be kind of a PvP situation. It's definitely for a group of friends. So if you've got a group of uh, a few friends or up to 10 friends that you want to play Valheim with, this is a great game to do that with. 
And I kind of feel like co-op games are just lost a little bit nowadays because we've got so many multiplayer games, so many options to go on and play with random strangers and have a good time that co-op games are definitely underrepresented, or at least co-op as a feature in a game is definitely underrepresented. Where Valheim represents it full force, they say it is a co-op game, they don't say anything about multiplayer or anything like that, because again, the mechanics are suited towards you playing playing with your friends. If you have random people in there, you're probably going to end up with some griefing unless you can control it through rules for the server in some sort of way. And you can actually rent a server for Valheim. So if you are looking for a server, I recommend G Portal. There's actually a link in the description of this video and you can save yourself 5% on renting a server. Now, having a Valheim server for 10 co-op friends is a great way to play because if you're like me, not all of us can get on at the same time. So having a server just up and running being hosted is a nice way to get all your friends to be able to play and not have to be on all at the same time. Now, I mentioned earlier how much content was in the game and how they really had quite a bit of content for early access. And I just want to show you the size of the map. So this is my map. I am 91 hours in and you can see how little of that map I've actually opened and explored. So the amount of time that it's going to take just for you to open and explore a single map is going to be massive. And not only is every island and every piece of land a little bit different, every map is a little bit different because it's randomly generated. So unless you're using the same seed to start your map, you're gonna have a, a bit of a different experience every time you start a new map in Valheim. But even if you start on a new map or a new world, you go to your buddy's server and start playing on there where you were playing in single player before, you have the option to either start a new character and start from scratch, or to take your existing leveled character and the gear that you want over to a new world, which takes a lot of the grind out of the survival genre. And I think this is a really cool way and a really good addition to the survival genre. So let's talk about bugs real quick. And aside from the death mosquitoes, I really haven't seen any in game. And I mean that both literally and figuratively. So the death mosquito, which is one of the craziest, most powerful mosquitoes I've ever seen in my life. Those things are terrifying. The actual game doesn't have a lot of bugs, which is another reason why Valheim has become probably the most popular early access game in 2021. I'm going to make that call now because they've really done a very, very good job of limiting bugs. I've only had a couple of times in the 91 hours that I've played where I ran into something that stopped me from progressing and made me have to close out the game, close out Steam, and then bring it back up. And even at that, it was just a minor thing where certain areas of the map weren't rendering in. And it may likely be that that was an issue with my internet and not an issue with the game. I have had two crashes since I've been playing, and most of those came after a very long extended periods of play, and I don't feel like those are necessarily quote-unquote bugs that happen from the game, but maybe just a system lockup on my computer. Now I want to talk about the water alone and the ships. Because I feel like water is one of those things that a lot of companies just stay away from. It's super difficult to code and figure out and to get it either looking right or acting correctly or functioning the way that they want to. And I'm going to tell you, the water in Valheim is absolutely amazing. You can get into storms and it feels like you're in a storm. You can get huge waves and it feels like you're riding a huge wave in your ship. And there's actually been a couple of times while I've been on the ship where I forget that I'm sitting in my computer chair and I actually feel like I'm in the ship and riding the waves. Now, while Valheim does not have the highest quality graphics for some parts of the game, the water is really one of those areas where I'm going to say they did such a good job that you really feel immersed while you're sailing. You really feel like you're sailing that ship across the sea. 
Now I'm going to touch on the graphics. There's been a lot of feedback or maybe negative feedback about the graphics, the character creation and the characters in general looking really blocky, looking very, very pixelated and not very good to look at, honestly. But remember, first of all, it's an early access game. So that's number one. We may see an update to the way the characters look as we progress through the game. As you run through the world of Valheim, you'll notice that a lot of the different things are modeled in different ways. So some things have a very low poly count where other things have a very high poly count. So there's a good possibility that we'll see those graphics upgraded or updated as we move through the development of this game. Remember, it is still in development as it's in early access. The other thing that I'll say as a personal note is I'm okay with the graphics being a little bit subpar to the times if the mechanics are there. So if they decide, well, we're not going to implement better graphics because we need those resources for the mechanics to work properly, I'm okay with that in the long run. Now, if you've picked up Valheim and you're having a hard time starting out with it, or you're planning on picking it up and you start having a hard time with it, you're either doing one of two things. You're either rushing the map too quickly, or you haven't adopted the punishing dodge block based combat system that they have in the game. And these are two mistakes that I made when I started out with Valheim. So first of all, trying to explore the map too quickly is really trying to progress through the game too quickly. So as you move through the map, you're gonna start in the meadows, you'll then go to the Black Forest and so on and so on. What you have to understand is as you move through these areas, the enemies do become more difficult and more punishing. So before you start exploring, before you start going out and trying to find different resources to progress your game, make sure that you're taking time to build your base. Make sure that you're taking time to level up your weapons and things like that on the lower level enemies. So that's going to be things like boars and necks and deer in that first area. And then learn to block. This is a block heavy game. So you are going to find yourself using the block and dodge system a lot. So definitely learn to use those systems early on and get in a routine or a pattern with that so that you can then face more difficult enemies as you progress through the game. And as a quick pro tip, you're definitely going to want to figure out the timing for the parry. The parry is a very, very powerful tool in Valheim to give you the upper edge against most enemies. The combat system in Valheim is definitely not a hack and slash, so you are not going to hack and slash your way through most interactions. You'll want to have a bow, you'll want to start damaging things from a distance and then switch to melee as things approach you and get closer. And you may think early on, well, this is kind of overkill on some of these low level enemies. But believe me, if you get into this strategy as you progress through the game and you get towards those more difficult areas like the swamps or the plains, you're going to be very thankful that you've gotten into this habit of damaging from afar and then switching switching to the melee when things get too close. Valheim is definitely balanced in a way where you need to use all the tools provided in order to defeat the bosses or even some of the standard enemies. So like I said, some bow work, some melee work, some blocking, definitely blocking and a lot of parrying in order to get through a lot of the interactions that you're going to have in the game. Now I want to cover the building system in Valheim and I really feel like it's somewhat cumbersome. You have to make a bench to build anything. And then as you progress, you have to have other benches to build that. So like as you progress into stone, you have to have a stone cutter and it has to be in the area. So I don't feel like this is a real hardcore vanity builder like some other games can be, but the build system is really, really good in Valheim as well. 
And the nice thing is, if you make a mistake in Valheim while you're building, you can simply break that piece and regain all the resources that it took in order for you to place that piece, which is a nice function because it takes a lot of the grind out of the mistakes that you may make while building. Now I'm personally not a big builder and I'm not someone that is very skilled in the craft of building, whether it's in a vanity builder or any other game, I really just kind of put up a small shack and that's where I store all my stuff for uh, me to come back to after my adventure. I'm more of the type that is out and about and playing the content. But I do believe that there will be some amazing builds that come out of Valheim. So don't discount the building system just because of what I say about it. I think the mechanics are there and there's definitely areas to grow upon that. I just feel like it's more cumbersome than some of the other systems in this genre. In closing, over the 90 hours that I've played the game, I've found it to be very enjoyable. It's like every time I round a corner, there's a new adventure to be had, some new boss to defeat, or a new enemy or biome to try to survive in. And I really enjoy the fact that everything seems to be progressing at a rate that I can barely keep up with. So I always feel like I'm one step behind as I'm trying to move into the next area, which I feel like is a good component for a survival game. Always being on the back of your heels and trying to get that better gear in order to be able to defeat that next area. The challenge is certainly there and the need for you to upgrade to that next level every time that you learn something new. So you go from stone to flint to copper to bronze to iron and so on and so forth. Every time that you get to that next level, you really are required to kind of upgrade your equipment and move through that process in order to be able to fend off the enemies in the next area that you're going to. So for those of you that have been around my channel for a while, you know I rate games on a good, bad, or ugly scale, and I'm definitely going to give Valheim a good rating. If I had a great rating, I would give Valheim a great rating, but I don't have one of those, so it is good. And I definitely recommend going out and picking it up if the survival genre is what you're into. And I want to know in the comment section below, did this video help you make a decision on buying Valheim? The whack moments in this video were sponsored by my legendary supporters. If you'd like to become a member, you can click the button below that says join. That'll give you all the details. And if you want to continue the fun, there's two videos on the screen. You can pick one of those to watch next. Please don't forget to whack the like button. And if you're new to the channel, I'd encourage you to click that subscribe button. Click that bell so you get notified when I upload another video.